Welcome to the Best of Glory. I'm Todd Grisham. The sport of kickboxing has a long and colorful past, from the formation of K1 in the 90s through the rise of Showtime in the early 2000s. And finally, to 2012, when Glory acquired the best of both of those organizations and became the global leader in stand-up combat. On this edition of Best of Glory, we'll take a look at three of today's living legends, heavyweights Rico Verhoeven, Bader Hari, and Alistair Overeem. But before we look ahead, let's look back at some of kickboxing's greatest legends of the past. When we return, we'll get things started with the king of kickboxing, Glory's reigning heavyweight world champion, Rico Verhoeven. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. Welcome back to the best of glory. Rico Verhoeven, the king of kickboxing as he's known, is currently on one of combat sports' greatest streaks. With 20 consecutive glory wins, dating back to glory four in 2013, he continues to get better and better. Of his 11 title defenses, glory 49 redemption stands out as his defining moment when he took on his bitter rival, Jamal Ben Sidi. Ben Sidi is one of only a few that has knocked down the king and beat him. On this night, Ben Sadiq wanted revenge, while Rico wanted redemption. I'm Ben Sadiq. Tonight I'm in Rotterdam, uh, and uh, I fight Rico Verhoeven, and I'm going to knock him out. My name is Rico Verhoeven, and I'm the kickboxing heavyweight champion of the world. And it's going to stay that way after tonight. 2011, I fight uh, Rico for the first time. I knock him out in the second round, and tonight I will do it again. Uh, I was still a youngster, uh, coming up in the game, and yeah, I lost. I made a mistake, got hit, dropped, and that's what it is. So, but uh, this time is uh, is for the belt. It's for uh, it's for for something big, you know. So the motivation is only it's only high. The mindset for this fight is just setting the score. That's it, you know. We're like totally two different persons. He's big. He's slow. Everybody knew uh, I go always for the knockout. But I prepare myself also for the five rounds. So uh, for me, five rounds is also no problem. But uh, tonight I want to I want to I want to entertain the audience, entertain the people, and uh, I want to give them a, a big good fight and uh, and knock uh, knock Rico out. My health is good and uh, I had a good preparation. So uh, I, I'm gonna show you guys uh, tonight. I'm fast. Uh, I'm technical. Uh, he just throws hard punches, and my actions can come from every side. High, low, head, body. So that's the biggest difference. The, the end of this fight is gonna look like a Jamal, tired, painful, uh, near crying, 
I, I was beating up champions in, in, in Tokyo in 2012. He, he wasn't there. 2015 in Las Vegas, he, uh, he insulted my family, he insulted my team, he spit at me in the press conference, and this just shows his his disrespectful. This fight uh, gonna happen, and uh, and then we, we will see who's uh, the real champion. I'm gonna let him feel tonight what the punishment, what the punishment is gonna be. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be painful. Jamal Ben Sadiq going to be the new world heavyweight champion. Here is our tale to take for this, the heavyweight championship of the world. And as you can see, Ben Sadiq, four inches taller. He's heavier. His reach is longer. Can the Moroccan beat Rico tonight? It's time for... at all times, pay my commands at all times. World title fight, I expect you to fight for it. Any questions? Touch gloves if you like. Rico never fights with emotion, but he's full of it tonight. He vows to knock Big Ben out. And we all know the story of how David Ready? slayed Goliath. Can Goliath slay Rico? Here we go, five rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. starting with his low kicks, but being very hesitant. Obviously respecting that power of Sadiq. Well, that right hand almost found the target by Big Ben. And it was the first fight, it was Rico throwing a low kick, where right, Ben Sadiq right, caught him. Right, right, right. Oh, and a couple of headbutts. Sadiq got Rico first, and then Rico answered back in kind. Tension in this building right now. Jamal's using a lot of feints, trying to get Rico to bite on something. Nice body kick from the Goliath. Yeah, we're seeing it really utilize those oh, kicks. That right hand. Five, yeah, he landed five, two of those right hands. But he's only allowed to throw one strike. Once you have the leg, you can't throw two. One strike only. Sadiq putting up more of a fight than some recent opponents Rico's faced. Yeah, Jamal's slamming that jab right down the middle. Rico controlling the center of the ring. You don't want to give the Goliath too much space to load up that power. Sadiq has that right hand cocked, ready for action. One shot if it lands on the button, and Rico is out. Oh, and there's the right hand, and it backs Rico up, and a jab, Rico's in trouble. He is in trouble. He shakes his head no. This crowd says yes. Oh, the right hand. A lot of those are coming close. The energy here is off the charts. Sadiq doing exactly what he had to do. Jamal putting out a lot of energy for this, but this is a huge opportunity for him to get the finish. And again, Sadiq lands. It's this and rights. It's the fact that he's continuing his punches. He's not just throwing a single right hand. He's following with his left hook. Slipped there by Rico, but this first round has been a borderline disaster for the champ. Small Ben Sadiq looks really relaxed as well. He's staying very calm and patient. When was the last time we saw Rico in this sort of fight? Yeah, we're gonna see a lot from Rico here. See if how he can recover, and he just went southpaw. And again, a stiff jab from the Goliath. So round one. Smokes. Wow. Five. Rico knows he's in a fight now. What? Round two. 
Jamal Ben Sadiq did lose some weight for this fight, probably to, to keep that pace for five rounds. All five judges score round one for Jamal Ben Sadiq. And another right hand blocked by Rico. Yeah, and he keeps catching Rico when he kicks. Rico's plan was to probably use his low kicks, but Sadiq's plan was to use his jab in a straight right versus those kicks. Rico's is most dangerous when he has time to settle into his game plan. Jamal hasn't allowed him to do that yet. Nope. Rico going southpaw again, looking to land that left kick from the south side. Jamal looks so relaxed in there. Yeah, he's not even breathing heavily. He told us he's in the best shape of his life. He has no cancer in his system. He's healthy. He's fit. And that's why he's skinnier than you've seen him. Yeah, he's showing great output that we haven't seen. And another right hand splits the guard of Rico. Yeah, Rico's getting caught every time he kicks. Straight wins in the heavyweight division, almost unheard of in kickboxing, but that's where Rico is right now. His last loss to Simi Schilt. Another mountain of a man. Yeah, Rico just threw a big right hand. Sadiq followed with one of his own. Clubbing right hand from Ben Sadiq. seen a ton of low kicks from Rico. No, because he keeps getting caught every time he throws them. Jamal's doing a good job at shutting Rico's kicks down. There's a jab from Rico, and that's how Sadiq knocked Rico out six and a half years ago. Rico threw a leg kick. Sadiq caught him with a straight right. Rico just found his jab, mixing it as a single and a double. So I think we're going to see Rico start boxing. The crowd roaring with every landed punch. <laughs> Dueling chance of Jamal and Rico. Ten seconds to go in round two. Rico's still confident coming forward. I'm really liking that jab he's throwing, especially when he puts it as a double. Who would have thought at the end of round two, Sadiq would have landed 36 total strikes compared to 20 for Rico. If you put your money on the Goliath, you gotta be feeling pretty good about yourself right now as we enter round three. Still, Sadiq looks like he's in great physical condition, not really even breathing hard. As you can see, the scores at the bottom of your screen. Verhoeven wins round two, so we're all even according to the five judges. Yeah, Rico's picking it up, and I, I, I mean, ex expect that jab to come from him a lot. And I think this is when his low kicks might start working. Rico promised to take Jamal into deep waters and then knock him out in the fifth round. There are those low kicks. Now Rico understands the power. He's understanding the timing of Ben Sadiq. So now he's a little bit more confident throwing his kicks. That kick to the body landed for Rico. What makes Ben Sadiq so scary is that he waits. He's so patient. But when he throws, it's got all the power. Exchange jabs. Rico seemingly is starting to find his form now. Should Sadiq be more aggressive? Well, it's, you got to think that his energy levels might be going down. And Rico just keeps pressing forward. But keep in mind, Sadiq has never gone five rounds in his professional career. Rico does it all the time. Look at the head punch discrepancy. 33 to 5 for Jamal. Rico just got away from that right hand. Ooh, missed that one barely. Jamal, 
Jamal being very tentative. There's a right hand, and it for him. Is that a knockdown? No, that was not a knockdown. Well, regardless, I think Ben Sadiq should capitalize on it. It certainly stunned Rico. His glove touched the canvas, and there's a nice jab from Rico, which gets an ooh and an ah from this clock, this crowd. Yeah, he found that in that second round. Right, right, right. Right. 30 seconds to go. Head kick for Sadiq, and he slips down afterwards. Come on. Rico going southpaw. Yeah, he likes to throw his left kick from here. That's a good strategy from Ben Sadiq as Rico goes southpaw, attack with the hands. Once you switch southpaw and you're an orthodox fighter, and your defense isn't as good. A close round three. This could have been a game changer here. When we come back, the championship rounds for the world heavyweight title. Through three rounds, Rico Verhoeven was in the toughest title defense of his life. Would the king be dethroned by the Goliath? We enter the championship rounds. This is where Sadiq has never been. These are the deep waters Rico Ready? was Ready? referring to. Round four, scheduled four, five. Let's see how the judges scored the third. All five for Verhoeven. Sadiq needs to come and win both of these rounds. This is where all the hard training comes in. All of his dieting and his weight cutting and his extra round work. His conditioning is legendary. Rarely do you see a heavyweight with the frame and the physique of Rico Verhoeven. Perhaps Anthony Joshua in boxing, but that's about it. Yep. Rico's trying to set up that left kick and that right hand. Sadiq's corner should know that Verhoeven is up two rounds to one. Perhaps Sadiq needs to be a bit more aggressive. Yep, if he has it in the tank, he's got to find it. Hey, wait. Uh, that corner looked left. pretty close. Again, sometimes it hits the top of the jock and the vibration can get you. In round one, it was Sadiq who was marching down Rico, but now Sadiq fighting backwards. Yeah, he's trying to draw him in, pull him into that right hand. And a high kick from Rico. He's starting to take over. Against Rico, you have to try to be first. Jamal needs to be first. He can't wait. He's got to try to be first with his jab. He stopped throwing that jab that was so successful in the first round. There's a low kick. Haven't seen too many of those. Oh, and that may have stunned Sadiq, who fights back with a right hand. Sadiq's got Rico against the ropes. Elects not to do much with it. A one-two there. Break! 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 Fight! Here it is again. Yeah, that left knee definitely hit low. Considering the tempo and the place we are in this fight right now, what's Nick Hemmers telling Jamal Ben Sadiq to do? Let's to go. Go. Dig deep and go. Give him. Give him some combination work. Throw that right hand and follow with it. Don't just wait. He's waiting too long. You don't get too many chances to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. Right. Can Sadiq right. seize the day? Right. Sadiq looks really good, though. He doesn't look overly exhausted. He's not breathing heavily. Still looks right. in good shape. Rico looks worse for wear, for sure, but he's won the last two, maybe three rounds. Yeah, he's looking better. He's, he's found his rhythm, controlling the center of the ring. Yeah, it's gonna be very hard for Sadiq to come back now. Rico's found his rhythm.
Mexico turning self off for some moments of the fight. Trying to land that left kick every time he's in that southpaw position. This is where he came forward. Trying to get Ben Sadiq as he was moving backwards into the corner. Little right hand that landed. Watch this, the slipping. Yeah, yeah, Rico yeah. trying to follow up after a bit. Not very successful. Ben Sadiq coming back with a right hand of his own, which has been the best weapon in here for him. Three minutes to go. This is the fifth and final round. The heavyweight championship of the world hangs in the balance. Final round. Can Sadiq find that early magic he had in round one, where Rico was in serious trouble? Verhoeven. Judges give him round four, which means Sadiq basically needs at least a knockdown, if not a knockout here in the fifth round. Yeah, he's gonna need more than a knockdown. If it's a drive, goes to the champion. Oh, and a left hook connects for Sadiq. Couple jabs and a right hand. How about Rico bringing the fight into the Goliath? Yeah, even though he's winning, he's still staying and exchanging back. He wants the knockdown, he wants the knockout. Some complain that Rico's not a closer. He's not a finisher. He's not a knockout artist. Is he going to prove everybody wrong here? The head kick started this sequence. An overhand right and another one. Oh, Sadiq's against the ropes. It's a standing eight. Three, four, five, six, seven. The mandatory eight count. What's up? What's Rico up? promised a knockout. Like I said in the previous uh, uh, interview, I had something to settle with this guy, and I settled it. Uh, what surprised me was like he uh, he kept his uh, his energy till like the the third round, and I expect him to be empty at the second. So that was a, a surprise. I got hit a few times, but you know that's the fighting game. So I made a few mistakes. So we go back to the drawing board and make it better. Rico with a highlight reel victory over Jamal Ben City. Yeah, he would look like he was in trouble in that first round, but he started finding this jab. He started finding that right hand. And here is that finish where he found that right hand, left uppercut. Paul Nichols had to step in and stop this fight. Whether you call him the bad boy or the golden boy, Bader Hari is back. You know, I fought a lot of tough guys. I fought Sammy Shield. He's like the father of all fathers, unbeatable. I knocked him out in a minute. I've seen strong guys. I fought Alistair over him. This guy is amazing, so strong. I knocked him out. I fought Ray Sefo. This guy is a legend as a chin of steel. I knocked him out. When I win, a lot of things will change in the heavyweight division. Like I said, I want eternal glory. I want people to talk about me even when I'm gone. Whether the sport is boxing, MMA, or kickboxing, these numbers speak for themselves. A record of 106 and 15, 92 knockouts, a knockout ratio of 87%, former K1 and its Showtime heavyweight and Grand Prix champion, victories over legends Simi Schilt, Peter Arts, and Gokan Saki. If you want to see one fight that encapsulates everything Badr Hari is all about, take a look at this one. It's the bad boy versus the bone crusher, Errol Zimmerman. We hope you're enjoying it just as much as we are. The winner of this one goes through to the final. They trade leg kicks early. And neither man wants to take a backward step. 
Both is, men throw with a lot of power, Sugar Ray. This is exactly what Suleiman needs to do, is actually take the fight to Butter. Because, as you know, if he sits back, Butter's much quicker and a lot technical when he's landing those leg kicks. Jab it's easier outside. said than done. Right, that's right. Jab outside, thigh kick from Butter. Hurry is the bread and butter combination of the Moroccan. Zimmerman in his first ever K1 Grand Prix. Shook off the nerves now. One and a half minutes remaining here in the first round of three. Body shot, belly button through the back there from Butter Hurry. That was a very nice straight right. Hurry in centering, keeping agile on the balls of his feet. Thought about a Superman punch. Bork right handed Errol Zimmerman. Nice jab, just threads it through the defense. Gets great extension on the right hand and a nice counter from Hurry. Got him against the ropes, no go to the liver, then to the head. Errol in trouble. Here it comes, Hurry. And Zimmerman tries to juke off the ropes. Zimmerman. And good old fashioned Donny Brook in the corner, right? Zimmerman took that well. Recovered, came back and countered back. So I was just going was... to say, I don't know about Zimmerman in trouble. He didn't look, he looked like he was doing pretty good defense. No, there. absolutely. But a hurry opening up momentarily, and Zimmerman edges forward, wants to throw the right, does. I like to see Butter use that jab a little bit more, just to find his range. Like Ernesto said earlier, in the first fight, you know, used his jab, he was smoking against Peter Ertz, so, you know, for, him, for this fight, I think he needs to go out, work up his jab a little bit more, just to find his distance. Under 30 seconds remaining, here in the first round of three, jab outside, fire kick from Zimmerman. One for the judges to call. Right hand there from Zimmerman is. Butter goes to the body. Ten seconds remaining. Butter chopping the lead leg again. Thumps to the midsection. Errol shakes his head and says, you've got to do better than that, Butter. Right hand lead from Butter. Then the jab over the top. End of the first round, we go to the towels. Kim Sun or Remy Bonjaski. From Butter, hurry as always. And through him with power. That's the beauty of watching the K1 World Heavyweight Champion. Almost. There's that jab Ernesto's yeah. talking about. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's what we were calling all along, right? Jab, body shot once more, and digging away to the liver section. Good handiwork so far from Banahari, dominating the boxing contest, then switches up round kick to the head. Errol tries to return the favor off the back leg. i got to say, I'm quite impressed with Errol in this fight because in the first one, he just looked lethargic, and yet this one, he's very sharp. Fly kick on Errol. Under two minutes remaining here in the second. Spinning heel kick to the midsection. Looking for the gut muncher. Didn't work for Bone Crusher Zimmerman. He gives a brief adjustment to the groin guard of Banahari. Zimmerman needs to start throwing down here. Butter circles off to his right. Cracks the leg kick. Zimmerman checks it. Shin on shin. Right hand lead. Tagging left over the top of the right glove. Good combination from Butter. What I love about Butter is very explosive and very quick. High left round kick. Trying to loop the shin across the forehead of Zimmerman. Oh, the Smack back! Smack back! Smack back! Butter Harris gonna ride the count here. He says he's okay. He'll take a breather. There's the right hand we talked about, Kimbo. He landed. Listen to this place erupt. Yokohama Arena is coming along. That's amazing. He went for that right uppercut, actually, and ended up uh, eating an overhand right by some of them. We told you all night, one of the sharpest right hands in all of K1 is on the 22-year-old Zimmerman. And here comes Hurry, digging away to the liver, then to the head, goes back to the body. Uppercut almost took out the ring bite. Zimmerman tries to thread the right hand again. Oh, big body shot from Butter on the inside. Rocks the head back with a jab. Goes to the stomach once more. Zimmerman pokes his tongue out. This is, I mean, seriously, I mean, if, Butter, if Zimmerman pulls this one off, it's going to ruin Butter. <laughs> well, you know what? But there was one thing that was questionable about Butter going into any of these fights, and that was his chin. Right. Yeah. And obviously, Zimmerman just exposed it. No, uh, but it was, a, it, was, it was a very hard shot. And he comes back very good. Oh, he went for the Lego Buster, the spinning heel kick. Final five seconds of the second round. Butter again. Oh, the big oh. The tide is turned. The tide is turned. The pitch of the swan. The pitch of the swan. And the listen of this place erupt. Oh, my goodness. I this mean, is unbelievable. As you would say, Mike, you can't strip things like this. Unbelievable. 
I'll tell you what, Ernesto, shades yeah. of when we commentated Butter versus Ruslan Karayan. Yeah. Ruslan dropped Butter, then yeah. Butter got up and dropped Ruslan. Well, it may, it, sometimes it looks like, uh, it's literally with Butter, I mean, he needs to, to get a slap in the hair sometimes to wake up. Yeah. Homeway Choi, same what it thing. Like. You know, he playing around, playing around. Homeway Choi knocks him down. Butter gets up and just annihilates the guys. Uh, oh, yeah. Four round. One more round to go. Three was, minutes will decide. What was the first round? First round was ten all 10-9 ten ten in favor okay. of Butter. Okay. So Butter Hurry's still ahead by a point. Okay. Listen to the applause. This is why K1 is the greatest fight promotion on the planet. No one quite does it like K1. And the Grand Prix is the Mac Daddy, the granddaddy of them all. Thrusting jab from Hurry. They are absolutely swinging for the KO here in the third round. That's a beautiful jab by Butter. And all along we've said that, you know, he needs to work off that jab. And that jab's eating uh, Zimmerman's face all night. Oh, nice right-hand counter from Hurry to the Schnoggin again. Of Errol Zimmerman thrust out the jab. Full extension, good reach. Zimmerman edges forward. He'll look to fire the right hand and again eats the leather off the lead of Hurry. I like to see Zimmerman move his head a little bit because he's just walking in and eating the jab. Uh, the jab, uh, Butter's jab is so oh, soft. And he dropped oh, him with the jab! Great jab. Well, no knockdown, no, says the referee. He upended him with the jab. Beautifully done. The timing. Well, Butter Hurry shouldn't be Moroccan. He should be Swiss with timing like that. <laughs> I don't think Zimmerman has seen those jabs. I'm sure he wanted to get his head out of the way, too. But I think they're just too damn fast. <laughs> but still, it goes. It can go both ways. Oh, the big shot again off the right hand. Errol shrugs it off and comes forward. Half a round remaining here in the third and final. Both men are throwing caution to the wind. Sticking jab again. Oh, that's oh, that's hurry. Foot meets mouth. I don't think someone wants to eat a foot like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a foot jab. <laughs> but his jab is like a straight right hand. It's, it's just out there so fast that Zimmerman can't even see it. Oh, right to Zimmerman's hand. credit, he's standing there and taking it. Oh, absolutely. Including a straight right hand that he just took. K1 World's Heavyweight Champion. Oh, the yeah, it's over. He's not going to get him. Oh, yeah. He's not going to get him. It's over. It's over. It's good. It's over. It's over. It's over. Oh, a standing ovation. That's an amazing fight. An amazing fight. What do you think about that game, though? Man, that was very exciting. Very exciting. Jimbo, after a fight like that, I want to say to you, welcome to our world of K1 Live. Hey, it's not to be here. I knew Bada, Bada was in his zone, you know, he was in his zone. El Zimmerman was in trouble, Bada was in his zone. That was one of the most unbelievable K1 fights we have seen in a Grand Prix right now. Up next, one of the greatest all-around combat sports athletes of our time, Alistair Overeem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now. Welcome back to the best of glory. I'm Todd Grisham. Most fighters that cross over between MMA and kickboxing usually don't find the same success in both. Alistair Overeem, however, is a glaring exception. He has performed in kickboxing with K1 and MMA with Strike Force, and most recently with UFC. Overeem was the first fighter to hold major world heavyweight titles in both MMA and kickboxing at the same time. Now, if that wasn't enough, he has one more hill to climb. Recently signed to Glory, Overeem has his sights set on the Glory heavyweight title. His record of success in K1 is absolutely legendary.
株式会社フジテレビ長船木正成スポーツ局担当局長より月桂樹の冠が贈られます。We'll step aside one more time. You're watching the best of glory. You know, I fought a lot of tough guys. I fought Sammy Shield. He's like the father of all fathers. Unbeatable. I knocked him out in a minute. I've seen strong guys. I fought Alistair Overeem. This guy is amazing. So strong. I knocked him out. I, knocked him out. I fought Ray Seffo. This guy is a legend as a chin of steel. I knocked him out. When I win, a lot of things will change in the heavyweight division. Like I said, I want eternal glory. I want people to talk about me even when I'm gone. Welcome back to the best of glory. I'm Todd Grisham. Next up is Glory 78, and it can be seen exclusively on pay-per-view. And of course, it features the return of Badr Hard. Plus, three world title fights. A rematch for the light heavyweight title between Alex Pereira and Artem Bahitov. The middleweight belt between top-ranked Yusri Belgari and Donovan Visa. And finally, the vacated lightweight world title will take place between the Wonder Boy, Tajani Bezdadi, and American Elvis Supergashi. The Glory 78 Super Fight Series will be available for free on GloryFights.com. Glory fans around the world will now be able to watch live pay-per-view events via the new streaming platform, starting with Glory 78 on September 4th. Fans must purchase the Glory 78 pay-per-view at GloryFights.com. It's the only place they can buy it globally. The streaming platform is Chromecast and Apple AirPlay supported. And coming soon, the Glory 78 preview show. For Glory Kickboxing, I'm Todd Grisham. Buy your pay-per-view now, and I'll see you at Glory 78.